Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the second video uh, on the uh, Huntington's disease. Uh, in the last video I've told you that Huntington's disease is a hereditary uh, progressive neurodegenerative de genetic disorders that stops part of the brain uh, working properly over time uh, and it have uh, and it is characterized by the involuntary movements there is lack of coordination the cognitive decline and the uh, behavior or the personality changes and it usually affects the individual between the age of 30 and 50 years although the juvenile onset Huntington disease it affects the children as well uh, I've told you that the uh, uh, HD or the Huntington disease is an autosomal dominant genetic disorders and the uh, gene which is responsible for the HD is located on the chromosome number 4 and it encodes a particular protein which is known as the Huntington protein. Uh, now there is mutation in the Huntington uh, pro gene, the HTT gene in the HD and there is an expansion of the uh, CAG trinucleotide in the HD gene and when there is expansion of the CAG trinucleotide it usually leads to the formation of the uh, abnormal Huntington protein and that actually leads to the Huntington disease. And, and it has been hypothesized that the mutated Huntington protein they form clusters within the neuron and these clusters are actually responsible for the neurodegeneration that you see in the uh, HD. Then I've told you about the important functions of the uh, Huntington protein that they are usually uh, present at highest level in the uh, brain and they are also responsible for the chemical signaling the transporting materials, the attaching or the, the, to proteins and other substrates. It is also protecting the cell from the apoptosis and it is also important for the normal development of the brain before birth. Now in this particular video, uh, I want to focus on the uh, different scenarios or the uh, inheritance pattern of the uh, Huntington disease. Now. Scenario number one is that if the uh, mother, uh, the genotype of the mother is capital D and capital D uh, with the capital D being the dominant allele causing the HD disease. That means that if the mother is capital D and capital D, if this is the genotype, the genotype of the father is capital D and capital D. So the first thing you have to do is you have to make the gametes and you all know that during the gamete formations, the uh, members of the pair they get separated from each other or you can say that the alleles they get separated from each other following the law of the uh, segregation of the mandel so if this is capital d and capital d that means that the gametes of the mother uh, they will be having this capital d and this uh, capital d so there is only one kind of the gamete because all of the gametes that this particular mother is making all of them they will be identical uh, if you talk about the father, again this is capital D and capital D, again the gametes, all of the gametes, they will be of one type like the capital D. Uh, so if you make the Punnett square, you all know that the outside of the Punnett square, they are showing you the uh, gametes. So this particular portion, this capital D and capital D, they are showing you the gametes of the mother and this capital D and this capital D are showing you the gametes of the father. So the uh, interior of the uh, Punnett square that is showing you the fertilized product. It means that if one gamete of the mother that combines with one of the gametes of the uh, father, you are going to get an offspring. So this gamete is going to combine with this one, the genotype of that particular offspring that will be capital D and capital D. Secondly, if you combine this gamete of the father with this gamete of the mother, again, you'll be getting an offspring with a capital D and capital D. And similarly, in these two boxes as well. So if you see all of the offsprings, they will be having a genotype of the capital D and the capital D and all of the offsprings that will be affected. This simply means that if both of the if mother and the father, uh, they are homozygous, for the uh, you can see HD disease all of the offsprings they are going to get affected the second scenario is that if the mother is uh, heterozygous for this particular uh, you can see allele it is having a, one of the dominant allele the capital D but the other allele that is normal and that is a small d but the father that is affected so uh, or it is homozygous for the uh, dominant allele so what will be the scenario then Again, the gametes of the mother, 
they will be of two types 50 percent of the gametes they will be having the capital d allele 50 percent of the uh, gametes they will be made by the small d allele the gametes of the father and it is homozygous for the dominant allele that means that all of the gametes they will be of one type that means that we'll be having the capital d allele so when you cross them uh, you can see uh, two of the offsprings they will be homozygous for the uh, dominant allele two of them they will be heterozygous for the uh, uh, they will be heterozygous that means they will be having one dominant allele and one recessive allele similarly here this capital d is the dominant one the small d is the recessive allele but as the hd is the autosomal dominant in nature and it is dominant in nature it means that the presence of a single copy of the capital d allele that is going to cause the disease so again in this particular scenario all of the offsprings that will be affected if you talk about the third one that if uh, the mother and the father they are heterozygous that means that they are having one copy of the dominant uh, the the diseased allele one copy of the normal allele in this particular case uh, the father again is having uh, a diseased allele and a normal allele so if you talk if you make the gametes of them that means that they will be having 50% uh, of the uh, gametes of the mother that would be having the capital D allele, 50% will be having the small d allele, similarly the gametes of the father, 50% of them, they will be having the capital D allele, 50% of them, they will be having the small d allele. So when you cross them, if you can see over here, this one will be an affected offspring because it is having both of the diseased allele. This particular offspring, again, it will be uh, an affected one because it is carrying one copy of the diseased allele. Similarly, this particular offspring, that means it is having a capital D allele, one abnormal copy of the uh, gene. So again, this will be an affected one. But here you can see is that this particular offspring is getting a, a normal copy of the allele from the mother, a normal copy of the allele from the father. So this particular offspring, that will be a normal one. This means that both of the parents, they are affected, but if they are in heterozygous condition, there is a 25% chance of the uh, normal individual. So this will not be a surprise that if you see a normal individual, uh, a normal offspring from both of the parents, which are, uh, you, you, which, which are the uh, Huntington's uh, disease affected individuals, because both of them, uh, they will be uh, heterozygous. If you talk about the scenario number four, uh, if the mother is normal, uh, it is having both the normal copies of the allele, but the father is uh, homozygous for the uh, Huntington disease, that it is carrying two copies of the uh, diseased allele. So if you make the, uh, if you look at the genotype of the mother, and if you look at the gametes, that means that all of the gametes, they will be of one type, the uh, small d and the small d. Uh, similarly, the gametes of the father that will be of the one type, it is it will be only carrying a capital D allele. So if you cross them, if you can see over here, all of the offsprings, they will be uh, heterozygous and all of them, they will be affected. So in this particular case, if you see the mother is normal, but if the father is uh, homozygous for the uh, Huntington disease, all of the offsprings, they are going to get affected. The scenario number five, if uh, the uh, mother is normal, but the father in this particular case is diseased one, it is, he is having the uh, Huntington disease, but in this particular case, uh, the father is in the heterozygous condition. So the gametes of the mother, again, they will be only one type, all of them, they will be carrying the small d allele, the gametes of the father will be of two types because one of 50% of the gametes they will be getting the capital D allele, 50% of them they will be getting the small d allele. So uh, if you cross them, as you can see the uh, results, 50% of the offsprings they will be uh, affected because they are having uh, a small d allele present in them, but 50% of the uh, individuals they will be or 50% of the offsprings that will be normal. So again, in this particular case, the father is affected, but here he is affected it in the heterozygous condition and the mother is normal. So 50% of the offsprings, they will be normal. 
if you talk about the scenario number six if the uh, mother is normal if the father is normal you can expect that all of the offsprings that will be normal so these are some of the scenarios where uh, you can uh, expect the uh, inheritance pattern of the hd uh, in the offsprings and the occurrence of the uh, normal and the diseased individuals so uh, in the next video i'll be focusing on the uh, symptoms the uh, uh, diagnosis and if there is any kind of the treatment available for the uh, huntington disease so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends